Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about some global security best practices. Back in the switch security section, we covered about best practices for port level or interface level security. This lecture, we're going to cover best practices for some security commands that we should enter in global configuration. And this is on both our routers and our switches. First thing to cover is login and exec banners. Messages can be displayed in the command line before and or after an administrator logs in to the iOS device. And this is most commonly used to display security warnings. So for before the login, that is the login banner. To configure that at global config, you say banner login, and then you put in a delimiter such as a quote. It's also most of the special characters on the top line you can use here. Then the router, you then hit enter, and then the router will give you feedback saying enter your text message, end with the character, the same delimiter that you used. So because we said banner login and then double quotes, hit enter, we'll get that feedback. We then type in the message that we want to show. For our example, authorized users only, we then hit the double quotes again and it will break us back out of the command. Now, the next time that a user goes to log in, before they enter their password, they will see that warning message. You can also configure a message that administrators will see just after they log in. That is the exec banner. For that, you say banner exec. So before it was banner login, now we do banner exec. Our delimiter again, again in the example, we're using the double quotes. It will, the router will tell us to enter the text message after we hit enter there. In our example, we're saying, please log out immediately if you're not an authorized administrator. Then hit the double quotes again, and it will break us back out of the command again. Then you see the effect of this. So when a user, an administrator goes to telnet into the router or the switch, before it prompts them for their password, it gives them the login banner, which was authorized users only for our example. Then it will prompt them for a password. They enter their password. Then as soon as they've logged in, they'll get the exec banner, which was please log out immediately if you're not an authorized administrator for our example. So both of those are optional. If you want, you can configure a login banner. If you want, you could just do an exec banner. And also if you wanted, you could put both of them in together. So that's our login and exec banners. Next thing to cover as a best practice is disabling unused services. By disabling unused services, that reduces the attack surface. For example, say that you've got HTTP running on the router and a hacker discovers that there's a new exploit that they can use that attacks HTTP on Cisco routers. Well, if you're not running HTTP, you're not susceptible to that attack. Another benefit that you get is it reduces the load on the router or switch. If it's not running the service, then it doesn't have to give CPU cycles to do that. So best practice is to disable all of your unused services. I just mentioned about HTTP there, I used that as an example. HTTPS, to secure HTTP, is often used if you're using a GUI, a graphical user interface tool to manage the router or switch. But HTTP really, there's never any need to have that enabled. So best practice is to, to disable HTTP. Another example of a service that you might want to disable is CDP. Now, in most normal environments, you will leave CDP running, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, because it's really useful if you're on a router or a switch and you want to see what neighbors are connected to it, what their IP addresses are. It's very handy to have CDP enabled. But this can be seen as a security issue as well. Maybe you don't want people to be able to map out the network using CDP. So in highly secure environments such as banks, it's pretty normal to disable CDP. 
So the examples we would do for the commands we would do for our examples to disable HTTP, it would be no IP HTTP server. That will disable HTTP, but it will leave HTTPS running. And if you wanted to disable CDP globally, it, the global config, it's no CDP run. Okay, the last thing to cover here is time synchronization. All of the servers and infrastructure devices in your network should be synchronized to the same time. So not just your routers and your switches, also any firewalls, anything like that. You've got all of your servers as well. Everything should be running at the same time. That aids in troubleshooting because now all of your logs will report the correct time that events actually occurred. In the real world, you're going to probably run into this where you're doing some troubleshooting and you look at the log and the time has not been set on that device. And the real time is the 2nd of January 2018, but the device thinks that it's 1st of February 1984. And then trying to figure out when things actually happened is very annoying. So it's much easier to troubleshoot if all of your devices have got the correct time on them. Another big reason that you want them all to have the correct time is that some security features actually require this. For example, Kerberos authentication and digital certificates. If you're using Kerberos to log into Active Directory, the client and the server, the time must not be more than five minutes out by default. If the time difference is more than five minutes, then authentication is going to fail. It's to stop people trying to send your username and password again if they've sniffed it pretending to be you. The other one there was digital certificates can be used for authentication as well. Digital certificates have got a valid time on them, say from 2015 to 2020. Well, if your router thinks that it's 1984, it will see it as an invalid digital certificate and it's not going to work. So for all those reasons, you definitely want to use time synchronization in your environment. The protocol that is used for this is NTP, the network time protocol. So you want all of your servers, all of your infrastructure devices to be synchronized with an NTP server. The other thing they can use is their own internal clock, but if you forget to set it, it can be way out. And even if you do set it, a router, it's built to be a router, not to be an excellent timekeeper, and the clock will drift over time. So you want it to be synchronized with an NTP server, which you know has got the exact correct time on there. A Cisco router can function as both an NTP server and or a client. Typically, you're going to have it configured as an NTP client, and you'll use some kind of external device, which you know has got a really good clock as your NTP server. Your configuration for NTP, first off, set the time zone on the router. If, you're, if you've got a router in New York, you'll set it for the New York time zone. If you've got a router in Sydney, you'll set it for the Sydney time zone. So in our example here, the local time is PST in the US, which is eight hours behind UTC. So we say clock time zone PST and then minus eight to say it's, it's eight hours behind UTC. Then we configure where the NTP server is. Now, you know how I said that Cisco routers can be either an NTP server or an NTP client. This can trip you up. To configure the router as an NTP client, the command is NTP server. So you say NTP server, and then you say the IP address that the server is at. To configure it as an NTP server, the command is just NTP master. So usually we'll have it configured as an NTP client with the NTP server command. We don't usually use the router as an NTP master. Once that has done, we can do a show clock to check that it is showing the correct time. Also to verify, we can do a show NTP status and we want to see that the clock is synchronized. Now, something with this for real world environments, when you configure the NTP server, the router does not just bang, immediately change its time, because that could cause some issues with internal processes. It will do it slowly over a bit of time. It's called drifting towards the NTP server. So it can take up to around five minutes before it is actually showing the correct time. So when you're working in the real world, 
and you configure your router or switch to use an NTP server, don't check the clock immediately. It's not going to be ready yet. Go make yourself a cup of coffee, come back and check the clock then, and you should see that it's got the correct time on there. Okay, so that was some of our global security best practices. In the next lecture, we'll configure it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.